Welcome to more breaking news for Penn State football. They just, it's the middle of January, but football season is absolutely never over. Never, ever, ever. After a full weekend of news, we are here on a Tuesday afternoon breaking even more. Sean Fitz, recruiting insider, Penn State football insider with us to give us the latest on what's happening with the Nittany Lions. So, Sean, welcome. What are we looking at today? Well, we're looking at yesterday on the show. We did the prospect spotlight. You asked who should we should go to, and I said, it's got to be Anthony Specca. He's going to be in the class sooner or later. I thought it was going to be later this week. Turns out it's going to be Tuesday afternoon. Anthony Specca, now the latest commitment for the Nittany Lions in the class of 2024, joining Erie offensive lineman Cooper Cousins, now Penn State with a pair of commitments, both from Pennsylvania in the next cycle. Uh, a little bit higher in the consensus, a four-star player. Uh, we had on three, I think, are the lowest in the industry on him. Uh, have him as an 87, that upper mid, uh, high three-star type uh, type prospect. Um, yeah, Penn State's got another linebacker. They took three in the class of 2023, and they're on board with their first in the class of 2024. So, uh, like you just said, we talked about this on the BWI Daily Recruiting Show, which was yesterday. So, if you want to check that out, get the prospect spotlight. We have it there. But, um, you know, give us the timeline, the recap of how all this went down. Because I know that that's, um, uh, as of yesterday, some of the stuff that we were talking about, Michigan was still in the mix at some point, right? And then Junior Day seems to have, have sealed this for them. Yeah, this seemed to separate into a Penn State-Michigan battle over the latter portion of the recruitment. Now, in hindsight, the latter portion of his recruitment, uh, Notre Dame was in there. A couple of other schools was, were as well. He got to visit a bunch of schools and um, did did the whole recruiting process, sort of had an, ex, an expedited recruiting prospect process there. Um, so he came back to Penn State late in the summer uh, around the Lash Bash, um, and was a, it was a chance, and, and Ryan Snyder talked about this yesterday, was a chance to sit down with Manny Diaz, was a chance to sit down with Dan Connor. Dan Connor, a big part of this recruitment, um, because I think a lot of the things that Dan Connor uh, represents and, and, and thinks about, Anthony Speck is the, the same way. I think he's a Mike. Um, he can play in the box, either the Mike or the Will, but I think he's a Mike in the long run. 6'2-ish, uh, 216 uh, is what we're working with here. Um, a very, uh, it, it's it's interesting watching his film, and I know T. Frank just put it here on the YouTube channel. It's it's watching his film. He looks uh, smaller than listed. He's he, We've got legit numbers on him, so he looks smaller than listed, but he is that big. Um, I wouldn't say refined in terms of being a linebacker. And I think that's fine. Like you look at, uh, some of the, the, the robotic middle linebackers that, that schools have recruited over the years and it usually yeah. doesn't come forth. Um, he's got athleticism. He's got, he's got a ways to move. Um, so it's just going to be about development, uh, adding that size. Uh, I think the arms may be a little bit short. Um, and yeah. we talked about that in terms of wrapping guys up. Um, but he's, he's a guy that finds the football and that's really what you're looking for after this last cycle where you took, probably two and a half outside linebackers. I think Tamir Robinson's going to end up being a Mike uh, for Penn state, but you, you added some outside guys. Now it's uh, there, there's always room for, uh, you know, good, good productive linebackers. And that's what he is playing at central Catholic. Um, you know, that's uh yeah. I want to ask you about and, that. Yeah. The, what yeah. is, what is the, because you, you mentioned um, size on film. And I agree with you hundred percent. What is the competition level at central Catholic? What sort of uh, in that Pittsburgh area is he, is he up against? I don't think he's going to get any better competition in the Pittsburgh area. I mean, Central Catholic is one of Pennsylvania's hallmark programs. They've done a great job uh, developing guys over the years. Uh, I think CJ Thorpe may have been the last Penn State Central or the, the cent last Central Catholic guy. Uh, John Patrician was from Central Catholic. So um, it's it, it's one of those big schools that produces and they, they go up against the top competition. Uh, it's interesting to watch sort of uh, so the development of some of those guys that came on to the, uh, the recruiting scene early. The guy that Specca is going to be compared to is David Adams, who went to, to Notre Dame, uh, didn't turn out having a, a good career at Notre Dame because of injuries, but kind of that same um, middle linebacker, same size-ish. I think Specca is more athletic than David Adams was, um, but uh, that's kind of the comparison that I think is going to come across, mostly because they're both uh, you know, central Catholic linebackers. So you talked about this already, three linebackers last class, and I, I believe that this is a pretty deep, uh, 2024 class again from what I've listened to you and, and Ryan Snyder talk about on the BWI daily recruiting show which by the way if you're watching this subscribe to our YouTube channel like the video so that you don't miss any content from Blue White Illustrated uh, this is pretty deep class the number of linebackers they have um, how many more can they take what's the room look like to you and knowing I'm, it's still pretty early and there's a lot to be determined there 
I think, you know, you look at um, what Penn State did in the last cycle, Kevion Keys and Tony Rojas, guys that are, you know, different style outside linebackers, T- Tamir Robinson, a guy that's going to be eventually a Mike, but just a box guy uh, in general is big, big kid. Um I would I would lean to in this uh, in this group, but you've always got that little grace period of maybe a guy like Dewan Lane at Gilman, who's you know six two and a half two hundred. That's a, listed as a safety, can eventually play. Maybe a Sam could 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 even bulk up and play a Will. You've got a bunch of guys in that uh, mold, and right now is a funny time in the cycle because you're looking at guys that are. 190 pounds and safeties for their high school team or, or essentially rovers. I mean, guys that play all over for their high school team that are eventually going to be uh, outside linebackers at the uh, college level and eventually the pro level. So I, I say two right now, um, you've got some good names on the board. Ryan had an update on Chris Jones today. Aaron Childs at good council. We're wondering if he's a linebacker, if he's a box guy, or if he is a uh, defensive end in the long run. There's there's a number of names out there, and they will continue to develop. Like I said, don't get too caught up on the size right now. Uh, Specca at 6'2"-ish. Uh, 215, 220 is good. I mean, but yeah. it's you have a, a linebacker that's 195 pounds. I mean, this is not something where you're asking a guy to go in and, and insert himself in the lineup and be 235 pounds right off the jump. You could you find that with Abdul Carter, but those guys harder and harder to find. So yeah. wouldn't get too caught up on the on the size. I would I would lean two linebackers, but there's always that grace period when you play a Sam, when you play a field backer, um, that that essentially is a third safety that you can work the numbers to, to, to add a third. Yeah. And it just, it's interesting given the depth and given Specca and kind of some of the things you and I have talked about. One of the reasons I think he looks small on film, you pointed out right away. And it, it, to me, it's the biggest concern is arm length here because that is a serious problem for linebackers. And then a guy that comes to mind of a similar profile, Blake Cashman from Minnesota, he worked his way into a starting role in the NFL, but very short arms. And that was a huge problem for him coming out in the NFL draft. Otherwise, a very productive college linebacker. And you see examples uh, closer to home on the on the Penn State roster where you have guys that don't have great arm length and struggle and the missed tackles are on film. You can't deny those things. But, you know, just some of the things I've some of my observations from watching him. Um, and of course, there'll be a full T. Frank's film room coming up this week. You know, maybe after we get to Dante Cephas or all the other things going on. Um, he is, uh, very aggressive, comes downhill very fast. I don't know that he always is patient and watching, um, you know, there's some things uh, watching him play Pine Richland when they're pulling, he's coming downhill and kind of getting caught up in the wash on the high school level. He can still get away with that physical enough to play through contact. But some of the things I really like about him, he does seem to have really good instincts, good pass coverage instincts so far. He, uh, as you mentioned, athletic, fluid, can turn and run. I think that's really big in Manny Diaz's defense. If this is a Mike linebacker, if this is the like what we're talking about for a Mike in this defense, that's an athletic Mike linebacker. And that's where I think they're trying to transition. Sideline yeah. to sideline speed? Is that, um, you know, just from what you've seen of him, is that it? Because what I see a lot is quickness in the short area, explosiveness, but I don't know if I've seen full you know, that, that explosive Tony Rojas speed, where do you, where do you think he falls on that? Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not thinking that many guys are going to have that explosive Tony Rojas speed. I, I will say Specca didn't camp or uh, we don't have any verified numbers for him in terms of testing, which is a shame. I always like to have that before you try and talk too much about a guy. Um, but yeah, he, he finds the football. He can make it sideline to sideline, but making it sideline to sideline. I mean, Tyler Elston did a great job of that in high school. Um, yeah. So it, it's a different level. Um, at, at the big 10 level. So we're going to, we're going to have to wait and see on that, but, uh, tremendously productive, which is certainly you like to see. Um, and, and is a guy that I think can help a recruit. And, and I will go back to this people that know a lot more about football than you and I, uh, Michigan's defensive staff, uh, Manny Diaz, uh, for one, Dan Connor, uh, they, they like the kid. So yeah. I'm inclined to side with them over, over me. Um, you can, you can make your own <laughs> choice in that, but, uh, I'm inclined to sign with them. And it was, it was interesting, especially with Manny, because when he came in last year, you remember P- Phil Pichotti, uh, yep. from Eastern Pennsylvania was firmly on the radar. Manny was not a big fan of his and move actually, uh, switched his uh, focus to Jer- uh, Josiah Trotter um, from Philadelphia. He ended up going to uh, West Virginia, um, but uh, was just he's got his guys. He's, he knows what he likes, and uh, apparently he really likes what he sees in, in Anthony Specca. 
Yeah, and that was the other guy that came to mind uh, with Phil Pachotti, it, just in the aggressiveness. Pachotti was was super aggressive in, in high school, and I see a little bit of that, but the difference here is with Speca, and I know that this is, so this is the part where Manny Diaz teaches, and, and all of this stuff is going to change as they grow and progress, and especially once they get to Penn State, but like, where are you starting from? on the on the scale right so how much do you need to learn about football he's got great positional fundamentals he's always square to the line of scrimmage he's uh athletic and agile gets into his gap really well and that's like so these are the differences Pachat between what i saw from Pachati and what i see from specca in terms of uh, maybe a box linebacker and not that will guy that's freaky athletic that we've seen them recruit before but still i i, I think those are the separating factors for me when i watch them so far and then it's about cleaning up the mental uh, mistakes and you love the aggressiveness coach, the aggressiveness to have a little more awareness. So I think like, like you said, I'd side with Manny Diaz and, and the Michigan coaching staff that this is a good football player, Penn state picking up a, a quality player. Any last thoughts about this recruitment or what happens next for the, yeah, new I compared him to David Adams a little bit ago. And I think Adams was more close to his ceiling. I know he had some injury mm -hmm. problem. Great kid. Uh, but uh, I think he, he was closer to his ceiling coming out of central Catholic than Speck will be. I think Speck still has some learning to do and some development to do on that learning, but a uh, smart guy that, that recognizes where the football is and, and does a good job finding it. So I, I, I think we have him, like I said, lower than the industry is an 87. Um, I'm fine with him as an upper three star. Um, we'll see what he gets in terms of athletic numbers. And as he continues to grow, as he continues to, to develop and things like that, he's a consensus four star, but yeah, right on that line between three and four. And I, I think that's fine. I think it's a good pickup for Penn state. We will be on the uh, prospect watch on high alert for the rest of uh, January here. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. That is Sean Fitz. Breaking news for Penn State football. They pick up linebacker Anthony Specka, the second player in the class of 2024. As always, make sure you subscribe to Blue White Illustrated and hit notifications on YouTube so you don't miss any breaking news content. And don't forget, coming up tonight, this works out perfectly. If you're watching this before the live show tonight, we're going live with Ryan Snyder. It's Ask Ryan, so we can have a longer form conversation about this and the rest of the class of 2024 tonight on the BWI Daily Edition. Until then, we'll talk to you later.